I read in The Moral Animal by Robert Wright about how monogamy is a sexual redistribution strategy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So this this really fascinated me, the fact that if you have one man with many women, you allow one particular man to capture most of the market, whereas Mm -hmm. if you have one man with one woman, you actually end up um, allowing man number two to get woman number two Whereas previously, he would have been looking at woman number 11 because women 1 to 10 would have been with man number 1. And that that kind of explains, I think, some of the resentment that you see in the black pill culture and in the incel culture around these chads, these high-value men that are able to sleep with many women because they see them as tying up available women's reproduction potential during fertile years when they could have been dating other people. And also, uh, how would you say kind of uh, bunching up the line, moving the queue tighter and tighter together uh, yes. I- I- in a way which has trickle-down effect that has potentially competed them out of the dating market. Absolutely. So these these uh, black ball guys will, as the meme goes, they hate Chad and Stacey. And it, it's it's funny you mention that because I, you are correct. So And um, the researcher, I forget the name that you mentioned. Robert Wright uh, is the book. Robert Wright, yeah, yeah. yes. Entirely correct, I think, in, in that monogamy in in the um the grand scheme of things is is probably a, a a newer concept a newer thing that's come about it was never the case in antiquity that we engage in monogamy it was typically polygamous right we had harems and such and i do think that there is an argument to be made about returning to that specifically when we talk about imbalances in the sexual marketplace with a small percentage of men hogging a large percentage of women so if we look at tinder data for example uh, it's you know most of the men on Tinder, of the profiles they come across, females, they'll swipe right on 60% of them. When it comes to females, they'll only swipe right on 4.5% of them. So that is a massive imbalance just on Twitter usage. And that that is even compounded by the fact that 78% of individuals that use Tinder are male. And so 22% of people that use Tinder are female, which means of the demographic, of the smallest demographic in, in terms of gender, the vast majority of those, these women are being selected by the vast majority of men and the opposite is not true for females dude i've just realized the implication of what you're saying and i've never thought of this before i think about this shit a lot right i've read everything that you've read i've read a lot of stuff around red pill and black pill and i've only just realized that one of the potential solutions to this is to go back to a Mm -hmm. polygamous uh, culture because if women can't get rid of their hypergamous nature if we can't rise, uh, raise men's uh, level of competition up in order to be able to match the women, mm-hmm. one of the solutions to make fewer people overall be single is to have many women with one man at the top mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. just leave the men at the bottom to be cast away. That's fucking terrifying. That's terrifying. And it's, it's not what we want to do. That is a recipe for disaster. That is a recipe for social upheaval and just societal disintegration if men are simply cast aside because they're inadequate. Fuck. But that's the yeah. case at the moment. That's the case at the moment with it being non-polygamous. Mm-hmm. Non-polygamous, correct. So imagine a society like China where there is a massive gender imbalance based off of the, the uh, one-child policy that they initiated you know, centuries back. And now looking at the, the modern sexual dynamics, what do you think is going to come of that society in 50 to 100 years? If if all of this, if our hypotheses here are correct and this plays its course. Do you think, are you talking about if you have one man with many women? Yes. So the, the so in essence, so as we just pointed out, it's it's that uh, polygamous, that uh, polygamous setup where it's one man with, with many women mm-hmm. and the rest of these men who are incapable of attaining a sexual partner are being left in the dust. But the only thing that they have to bind together over is their mutual hatred of Chad and Stacey. Of Chad and Stacey. Yes. Fuck, man. That. So I never thought of the fact that a potential solution, and I'm going to guess there'll be a utilitarian rationalist out there who would say that this is actually an optimal outcome as long as you can control this underclass of sexless men. Yes. Um, that you actually end up reducing the number of people overall that are single by doing mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Um, but you very, very much create a a bifurcated society. You have the haves and the have-nots. And the Matthew principle yes. comes out with this as well. So, I mean, as an example, I think uh, Robert Wright explains, I can't remember, it was in 1994 he wrote this book, man. It's so prescient. It's amazing. And um, But at the time, maybe the richest 
man was like Warren Buffett or something. It's like a really unsexy example. And he talks about the fact that uh, you could have the richest man in the world that's worth however many billion, and he could fund the lives using money as a proxy for resources, which is one of the fundamental things that women want from a man. Uh, mm -hmm. He would be able to fund like 10,000 women's lives the same yes. as as one millionaire. Um, yes. And when you think about that, you go, well, okay, obviously women want more than just monetary access. They actually want emotional control, uh, emotional uh, connection. They want to be able to feel like they're part of a working capacity family and so on and so forth. Uh, but when you think about it like that, and if the choice is between being completely single as a woman, as you get into your thirties or being one of many with a man who you know can look after you because he's one of these super earners with all of the resources and all of the status. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how tempting that ends up sounding. <laughs> Incredibly tempting, I would, I would assume. Because it's, it's the prospect of being funded, uh, pretty much winning the lottery ticket when it comes to these, these Warren Buffett types and having to raise children with a man that you're not necessarily attracted with or attracted to or even happy with that doesn't necessarily provide the sort of life that you want. Well, the third option is obviously to, con is to continue uh, leading a solo ranger life. And yes. I think that the, from a utilitarian perspective, it would like, why, why isn't everyone in a relationship with Elon Musk? Like I should be in a relationship with Elon Musk based on utilitarian approach. Well, it's because he's building, he's busy building rockets. I think that's what the issue is. He's not, he's not, he doesn't have the time for that sort of thing, but a, jo a terrible joke aside. Yes. Your your point is well taken. Yes, um, because it's you know what it is. I think it's just it's a matter of unfamiliarity. So this sort of dynamic that we're describing is not something that people subscribe to normally, right? Something which is entirely foreign to us, given the fact that in nu the nuclear family and monogamy is, given the, the fact that these two things are still ingrained within within the way we do relationships today. So well, while it may not be palatable today, it might be palatable in 10, 20 years' time, 50, potentially. That was the aftershock of the Renaissance, right? The As Rollo Tomasi, founder of the Red Pill, calls it the one-itis, the belief mm -hmm. that there is one true love. And this was very much pushed through the Renaissance. And then if you think about popular recent culture, you've got Disney movies like Aladdin that really, really just fundamentally create this. There is someone yes. out there that is perfectly built for you and you will spend the rest of your life together. Yes. So I, I have a bone to pick with Disney. I have an axe to grind with them because I think the Disneyfication of romantic relationships is incredibly dangerous. So uh, so are, are you, uh, your parents still together? Yes. Yes. So our grandparents and our parents are they typically have lower rates of divorce because the basis of the relationship was not necessarily based on their happiness per se. It was more so getting things done and ensuring that these children were raised in a correct manner, right? And that often meant putting up with the opposite sex, putting up with uh, your partner, despite the fact that they're behaving like a dickhead on that specific day. Today, things I think are different because, again, it's that Disneyfication of romantic relationships where if it's not perfect, if it's not a fairy tale, I don't want it. And so it is subject to divorce. And it again goes back to that concept of suffering and hardship and rejection. You know, how good was the relationship to begin with if once you hit a, a rough patch, you immediately give up? I think that you see this as well with the increasing masculinization or the masculine frame that women are being encouraged to take too. You know, uh, don't settle for less, clap back, be a boss bitch. I know yes. that these are all kind of funny Twitter memes, but they permeate, the, you know, phenomenologically, yeah. they're in the back of someone's mind. They're in the back of a girl's mind. The fact that he doesn't deserve you, babe, all of that sort of stuff mm -hmm. is averse to working through challenges with a man who is on a par with your sexual marketplace value. Um, yes. And the same thing goes for the guys. It's like plenty more fish in the sea. Get over your last girlfriend by getting under the next one. You know, the, the, there are meta memes on both sides of the fence here. Now they're being played in different ways. The men are being reminded to reinforce their masculine traits and the women are being reminded that a protectionist strategy is to adopt masculine traits. Mm -hmm. But again, what we're seeing, I, I, I need to, I, know, I, might, I, I need to ring Rob for like three hours and talk it through, but there is a masculine frame, a masculine preference which is being 
it's like when you varnish a table and it's just it's just like a smattering across everything or it's like the direction that the wind is pushing whether that be with how you're supposed to spend your relationships how you're supposed to um think about education how you're supposed to think about your career all of these things they really do seem to be pushing in that direction but with the women's side of things um yeah they're being encouraged to not accept a not a subpar mate, but a uh, difficult situation. Guy. It's, yeah, well, difficult situation yeah. with a uh, equitable mate. Yes, yes, it's it, it's a problem, and it, obviously you're making the point here about ideas and memes, and it's it's not just a meme. It's it's a mode of thinking that is being inculcated by young women and also young men to an extent, and it's incredibly problematic that this this notion that one must not necessarily settle. It, it's fine, right? I don't think you should ever settle per se, but it's it's more so that you should be very realistic about what it is that's attainable and what it is that's out there. And life is unfair, and you're not always going to get what you want, and you're just going to have to deal with it. Well, the and if more people... Sorry, well, I was going to say that if more people were to come to that realization that they would just have to get on with things and just accept them as as to how they are, well, it'd be a lot simpler, wouldn't it? What do you mean by that? Well, if if one if if you know the average female out there who is after you know Giga Alpha Chad realizes that she can't actually attain Giga Alpha Chad, and she may in fact have to go with um, you know Storm and Norman ex- as an example, or Joey Bag of Donuts, she'd have a she'd have a romantic partner. But it's that notion of settling, being the boss bitch, which comes into conflict with it. That what she's told and what she may necessarily need are two different things. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.